I'm a fan of the Splatoon 3 trailers. I think they're fast, there's a lot of small details for me to analyze, and they're honestly really hyped to watch. Look at some that? random ass game. Wait. <gasps> and you know, no one really expected a Splatoon 3 this early, but occasionally, I remember. Oh yeah, there's people who watch these and have no idea what this game is or how it works. How does it look for them? Splatoon 3, get over it. Get over it. I don't want to play Splatoon. This is for like, keeping the f kids busy. <laughs> At Thanksgiving. What the f is happening? My ears! <laughs> yeah, so this is a major advertising problem. For those who already know what Splatoon is or are familiar with the series, the trailer definitely does a lot. But here's the thing. For those who don't know about the series, it is a mess of fast-paced, confusing mumble-jumble, weird stuff they don't understand and there's absolutely nothing to get attached to. On top of that, there's a problem that I think both Splatoon and non-Splatoon fans will agree on, which is that the games kind of look similar to each other. Like, a bit too similar considering the predecessor is on the exact same console, and, you know, it's a problem when a lot of people already own that game and need a reason to buy the sequel. These three things are Splatoon 3's big advertising problems, and they've even been advertising problems for the previous game. So I want to go over how to address this and ways I think they could be doing way better. If you enjoy it, be sure to subscribe. And without further ado, let's get right into it. While these are different problems, I think the solution is the same. Adding a little bit to the trailers that can slow things down, point out what's new about the game to both explain why current Splatoon players should be interested in buying it and why non-Splatoon players, especially those who play other shooters, should be interested in buying it. I think the first trailer is not only the most important, but the best example of this. So to show what they could have done, I'm going to be adding on a little quick section at the end of the multiplayer, and I'm even going to do it in Nintendo's same Squid Research Lab style to make it seem as much like it's something Nintendo could do as possible. It's been two years in the Splatoon world, and it seems like the Inklings have moved to a completely new and desolate location. This area is called Splatsville, or as the locals call it, the City of Chaos. This area not only seems to have developed some new weaponry, but it looks like the Inklings there have developed entirely new abilities. We saw one of them with this squid roll. It seems to be a way for them to evade incoming attacks. And in fact, some more advanced squid can even be seen shooting during this. We can even see them using it multiple times. On top of this, when swimming up a wall rapidly, it seems like Inklings can do a squid surge, shooting them high into the air and allowing them to shoot those pesky campers. These new abilities seem to really add to the popularity of Turf Wars, making them more more common than ever. And also, no way, does that really seem to be an Inkzuka? Specials like these were banned and haven't been seen for years. I guess this place really doesn't follow the rules. On top of that, there seems to be some entirely new special weapon technology. We've only spent a little bit of time in this brand new desolate land the Inklings now call home, and we'll have to do plenty more research to truly see what's happened over the past two years. We'll be back with more updates, but until then, you can look forward to Splatoon 3 launching in 2022. So in that segment, I've shown off the brand new and returning turning specials, what makes them unique, the movement options and how much they add to the game, and a bit of the story with the brand new location. Compared to the original trailer where things like squid rolling and shooting at the same time were only shown for less than a second in a tiny corner, these things are now clearly visible and available to viewers. This example gets even worse when you look at Splatoon 2's first trailer showing off another new movement option, this time for the dual lead. Now that's how you show off a new option, but anyway, back to the squid roll. These are mechanics that I think would both appeal to other players who haven't heard of the Splatoon series, like other shooter players, but this will also help with the other problem of making Splatoon 3 seem more distinct from its predecessors. And yes, I know there was a squid research lab bit at the end of the second trailer, it's literally what I used in some of this footage, but the difference between what I did and what that one did is it mostly told you stuff you already expected, like yeah, there's gonna be new main and special weapons. The two main new selling points they said in that was that Splatsville is the City of Chaos, which didn't have as much emphasis on it as I felt it should, and that the Splatoon world has no mammals in regards to the story being Return of the Mammalians, which that part I'll give is pretty cool. But again, as a whole, I feel like this more just tells you stuff you expect and doesn't really go into detail about anything that could be seen as exciting for the game. And that's the thing that makes me sad about this. Stuff like the new movement options or what they're doing with returning specials or the whole idea of a City of Chaos are genius ideas, but they're not really shown off properly. Like, these are your game's selling points 
minutes, but if you're not watching the trailer back in slow motion or an avid Splatoon fan, you're probably not noticing them. And this is an issue in all three trailers. The Salmon Run trailer actually showed off that you can squid roll twice in a row to add even more to it, but again, it's a small, fast section that has no talk about it whatsoever. I think the easiest part for anyone to understand from these trailers are probably the special shown off in the second trailer, because they're not just given a spotlight, but they're shown off for an ample amount of time in multiple clips. Later in that trailer, we have the single player, which again, if you're a Splatoon fan or someone who looks into details, you'll notice a lot of stuff, but if you're someone who doesn't, it'll either A, look like the same hero mode as the past two games, or B, be another jumble of mess where you don't understand what's happening. And while I understand the devs want to save some things for later, it's kind of annoying to see some of the cool new stuff not really touched on. Like, look, it's Octavio in a mech, he looks like he's on our side. Nothing. Oh look, a Salmon Run Godzilla, what a cool idea. Nothing. It's been a full year since Splatoon 3 is revealed, and there's not enough new things to talk about or that people should be looking forward to. And even if there is, it's again stuff like Octavio's mech and the Salmon Run Godzilla that we don't know enough about. I'm aware that many of these things get more detail in Twitter posts, or of course people like me do analysis on them, but for the general person watching it, if they don't understand what's going on, why the hell would they look into it any further? There has to be things that piques their interest and makes them want to look into it more. And on the content creator side, yeah, I love doing that. But the things I should be bringing to light should be more specific or tiny details, not Hey, this is a key mechanic in the game that they barely show. You should know about this. I mean, granted, this isn't as bad as the Wii U Splatoon 1 ads where the game was marketed to exclusively five-year-olds. But this series has always had and will continue to have a problem appealing to mainstream audiences, especially those who play other shooters, people who would probably really like this game. It's a huge group that, rather than having something to entice them in, just gets confusion, ignores it, and thinks it's for kids, and it's entirely not their fault. This also hits for me because I was in that same position. I played other shooters, I had no interest in Splatoon and got it randomly as a gift because I had a Wii U. I didn't want to play this game, I had to try it out in order to like it, and most people will never make it that far if the advertising keeps looking like this. And yeah, Splatoon is perceived as a kid's game, and that's a hard thing to change. It'll take a lot of time, but I think it will happen. Smash had a reputation as being a kid's party game, or a party game that wasn't a real fighter, or a bunch of others that it's eventually overcome, at least to most people. I think Splatoon will have a bit of a harder time with that, especially since it started with the Wii U era of ads. And admittedly, I don't have the answers for this one, but I do think it's something that'll happen with time as long as advertising continues to appeal to all ages, not just kids. And yes, I'm aware that Splatoon is still a major selling game. My point is it could be selling so much better if the advertising was better. Just because it's doing well doesn't mean it's failing to appeal to specific groups, especially demographics it should appeal to. The next time we see Splatoon 3, they need to do a good job of making sure whatever they're trying to communicate appeals to everyone and could be understood by much wider audiences because it could get a lot more interest in their game. Especially because Splatoon at its core has a lot of awesome things things to show off, from the movement to the variety of weapons, it's not even just the new stuff. While Splatoon 3 will still sell well, the potential for it to do even better in entire new audiences is just being killed off by advertising that doesn't really allow it to reach those people. The good news is, Splatoon is a game that gets DLC for multiple years after its launch, and it'll probably be shown in many more directs, so there's going to be other opportunities to show it off better to general audiences. I just have to hope it gets improved. But that's just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all in another video.